Do you have any idols in your life? And what actually is an idol in the first place? And if we do have idols in our life, what should we actually do about them? Okay, so first things first, what is an idol? Well, a quick story. Some of you have heard the name of Saint Jerome. He was a great fourth century saint and doctor of the church. What you might not know is a personal story that Saint Jerome shared in letter number 22. And we know this from history, where he says in letter number 22, that it was about midway through Lent one year, and he fell gravely ill. And during that Lent in which he was gravely ill, he had one of two visions in his life. And he received a vision whereby he came before the judgment seat of Jesus himself. And Jesus looked at him and said, Who are you? To which Jerome, re Jerome replied, I am a Christian. And Jesus said, You lie. You are not a Christian. You are a Ciceronian. And that's when it hit St. Jerome that even though he was a Christian, he was doing a lot of good Christian virtuous things, his primary captivating thing in his heart, where his imagination really at the end of the day went to, and what occupied most of his attention, was not so much Jesus, but a man named Cicero. He loved to read Cicero. Cicero was a great Roman orator and writer. And at the end of the day, Jerome was more defined by being a Ciceronian than a Christian. So what is an idol? An idol, simply put, is anything that takes the place of God in the center of my heart. And it can take the center of my heart in two primary ways. It's anything, anything that I am seeking more than God and anything that satisfies me more than God. This can be just about anything. And I'm gonna give you a brief list of some of those things. An idol can be a person, a career path, a possession, a pastime, a pleasurable activity, a personal preference or performance measure, a self-proclaimed identity, a thought process, or even a philosophy. So what do idols do? If they're actually idols, what effect do they have in our hearts? Well, there's an old phrase that simply says, those who marry the spirit of the age will soon be widowed. In other words, empty, bereaved, um, this is exactly what an idol will do, because an idol, by definition, is anything that I cannot take with me into heaven. And so if I'm seeking to marry it, if I'm seeking to have it be the primary occupying place of my heart, well, it will ultimately leave us widowed. It will leave us empty and barren. This is exactly what the prophet Jeremiah says in the Bible, that the people of Israel began to follow false or empty things and became empty themselves. This is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 13. They, my people, have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. So again, this is the ultimate effect of every idol in our heart. And oftentimes, idols can be very subtle. But the effect, ultimately, of every subtle idol is that it leads me empty. Because God is the only one that can truly satisfy. And if I'm seeking to satisfy myself, I have no room for the living God in the kingdom of heaven. So it will be very hard to enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, if I'm seeking to erect for myself my own kingdom, things that I am seeking and that satisfy me more and apart from God himself. So lastly, what do we actually do if there are idols, big or small, um, with varying degrees of gravity in our hearts? Well, the overall uh, all-encompassing principle is we want to recalibrate our desires onto God. To recalibrate means to like refocus, reorient my heart to the true north. It's like a term uh, that people use about compasses, to recalibrate, to get it to point back to true north. And so I want to ask you, ask you to take at least 15 minutes, if you're able, today to consider this one question. Is there anything in my life that I am seeking more than God and that is satisfying me in my heart more than God? And can I go into a time of prayer to honestly assess my life in, in terms of that question? And if there is anything, big or small, can I recalibrate my desires in my life back on the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the one and the only one who can ultimately satisfy me? God bless you.